Did he get it? I can't tell. He probably did, right? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be like that. A little rude, I would say. Ooh, hello, big man. But you don't like your balls getting hit. I'm over here now. I wonder if he sees me through all this mist. The mist wall is particularly brutal. At the border of biomes. He's like, kind of lost me? What? Sir? Hey! Free hair stuff from Skeetos. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Just hang out over here. New to Valheim, planning my first playthrough on the Corvus Supercontinent on that seed. Cool. I might have to go through uh, a little, a little bit of uh, progression. Talk about just uh, that progression, but like progression theory. Talk about why. Why that stuff is so good, usually. Dick trophy. Nasty. Where is Mr. Gyal? Gyal's gotta be, like, right over here. Jolly boy. I'm almost out of rest. Fuck this shit. Yeah, Valheim can be like super punishing in certain regards. If, uh, if you don't know what's going on and like the seed. It's like... Does Deceit have good progression? No? Well then you could have wasted like 12 hours exploring or like probably like close to 30 hours over a, uh, a whole run which is annoying as hell. And let's do some him and shenanigans. Sir? So nice, that's so so nice. Still hear the gyal. Hate that. Okay. Ah oh, no! My potions. I don't need this. Oh, oh, you hear me, very nice. Over here. Oh, love that stuff. But yeah, a lot of people don't really understand what makes, like, a seed valuable. And I get that. I totally understand not understanding because it is uh, a, an easy trap that many people fall into. 
that I've fell into. You know, you have a seed, and you're like, oh my god, there's like all five biomes on the seed. It must be so good. No. Not necessarily. Ow. That sucks. Not necessarily at all. Uh, if your seed has bad progression in pretty much any of the biomes, it's not good. Like that could be, that could be a uh, devastating hit to your run, in terms of uh, aimless hours spent doing nothing, which some people really hate. But also, the worst thing is. Uh, you could be forced to sail out into large, vast, unopened territory. And if you have to do that early, you could have your carve demolished by a serpent. In which case, you could lose all of your stuff, and then that's the real time waster right there. Because you effectively have to start over. It's just awful, awful, awful feeling. Put this in here. Take these. But yeah, uh, the main things that you want... You want really good swamps, dense with crypts, on your starting island, or really close for an easy sail. So that you have no risk. Let's see, let's put all this stuff in there. You also want a uh, merchant on your starting island. That's so convenient. Let's eat this, why not? You want a little bit of planes. If you can start doing some early planes shenanigans with the root harness, uh, the rewards are huge. I mean, you could, if you get an early b barley farm started, that's that's massive. That's just so good. Okay, world save. Alright. Um, swamps as well for early turnips. You want really good sized mountains. And I mean good sized mountains. I don't mean tiny mountains. Like uh, certain seeds will generate under Starting Island. No, I mean like big, like couple of nice mountains. Because you want frost caves because they have... Uh, they have a lot of uh, good things in there. Not only is there a decent source of bronze and iron just to have with you. I mean, bronze and iron being good now that we're in the Mistlands is uh, super nice to have that bronze and iron extra from the Frost Caves. Like That is nice. But also just like... A bronze bar is... 20 item stands, so you can make your base look very beautiful, and uh, iron nails is also really nice, and not too uh, terribly high quantities as soon as you hit the planes, so that's very good as well. Of course, you want an especially large swamp also because of Sirtling Geysers. Do you think there could be a significantly better map seed than from the Corvus video? From my Corvus video? Yeah. No doubt about it. Like, absolutely. I've already found a better one. With that style of generation. The Corvus video is just... It's not about demonstrating that seed. It's about demonstrating that generation. Uh, anybody who's been, like, really, really searching for a bunch of seeds for a while, just, just out of boredom or what have you for the future... Uh, there is a, a, a high, high, unusually high frequency of that uh, supercontinent generating on the world. Even generating at, at the spawn area or connected to the spawn area is pretty, pretty decently high compared to a lot of other types of generation. So you... Uh, you really want to find one, and it's it's most likely going to have all the progression things that I've already mentioned, but uh, the reason why I say that there's going to be one that's guaranteed better than the one that I saw in the video, because 
there was no coastal maypole on that one. And a coastal maypole is something that I don't have here. I don't have a maypole. Uh, it was here pre mistlands. It is not here if you generate it post mistlands, which we are in the post mistlands now. So the generation ate my maypole. The maypole would have been right on the coast and it would have been really, really good because you get an extra minute of comfort and it's just, it's just so good to have that extra minute. It all stacks up. It's all really nice. So if you get a, one of those seeds with the coastal maypole, that's really good. The, uh, the mist lands as they are right now, in order to check for the best of progression for them, We're gonna have to wait, sadly. But uh, actually, like I'll check right now to see if uh, WD40 Bomber Seven has added any unique uh, unique locations to Mistland seeds, specifically abandoned mines. So they've added. Very recently, they've added bone dig, which are the uh, the bones. But that's not specifically good enough. What you really want in the mistlands are uh, infested mines and and uh, petrified skulls. You want those in particular, in high frequency, preferably on the mistlands attached to your starting base. Right now, we can't check for those, which is really unfortunate. Alright, I'm going to go try to kill that Gyal and then set up a Plains Farm. I need some more wood. I don't care too much. Yeah, hopefully in the future, in the near future, we'll be able to check for those. At which point I can roll through the backlog of seeds that I've gathered. And hopefully that people uh, who watched the Carvis video have also gathered. And we can find ourselves a re some really, really good seeds. Ow, that hurts a lot. No root harness. Taking that right off because of the gyal nearby. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's really fun. I want better vision. I've lost them. I've completely lost them. It's so weird how the fog is better vision, even. That is absurd. It is the mist lands, after all. Wow. There you are. Okay, wonderful. Verticality. Y'all are still around. There's still that one star seeker around. Somewhere. That's a soldier boy. I'm gonna ignore the Mr. Soldier Boy right now because the Gyal is right there.
So at this distance, frost arrows are really good. Okay, soldier. Okay. Ah, oh, there's a one star. Very nice. Wonderful. Oof. One mass saved my ass. This is when the, uh... What is it? That's when the Staff of Embers would be really good, when you really, really start sending the, uh... Seekers away. See how I maneuvered myself mid-attack like that? I specifically wanted to maneuver myself out of Soldier Boy's slam radius. Ooh! Big hit on the Soldier. Oh, he just got comboed by the log. Unfortunate. Ah! I gotta get better at this uh, Soldier's timing. Wasn't my best soldier, theoretically, but, uh, hey, not bad. Can I not take this carapace? Damn. Too much wood, huh? That's fine. How heavy is the- oh no, I got it, I got the carapace. What is that? What is- what was aggro there? The Gyal is attacking something. Huh. Oh, Gyal versus Locks! Dude, the Locks are fucked! I read that now the maypole is a craftable item actually. It is seasonally. So in during midsummer, they will add it as a craftable item. Just like how now that it's uh close to the winter holidays, Christmas and all them, they're adding uh they add they've added the uh Yule tree. And that also adds a comfort. The thing about the maypole is the maypole can naturally occur on a world, although it's very rare. The Yule tree cannot. So that's why you want to check for maypoles. Maypoles at the coast. The coast because it's good to sail, even if just a little bit. Box, you have to be shitting me. Rude. Rude creatures. Go attack each other. But good boys. Locks, you... What? I can see your balls, y'all. Fight to the death already. He's done. Woo! Ouch. Good thing I got fire res. Gyal trophy. Love the Gyal trophy. It's so goofy looking. Can I not take it? Is it a wood thing again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can set up the farm in peace. Hooray! So much destruction. Huh?
This farm does not need to be very large at all. Let's actually cultivate first. I did not. Or, no, I did bring it. It's just in here. Thought I might have heard something. Oh, uh, this is fine. It's okay to have a tiny radius so that mobs with big hitboxes don't smash your shit. Although it's very unlikely. Ah, out of workbench range. Wood. this here eh take trophy not too much a fan of that Take trophies in two different spots. Let's see, Gyal trophy, Gyal trophy. Chickens, come on. Mandible. What do you think of mods such as Better Trader and Plant Everything? I mean, go for it if you're feeling it. It's just, uh,. Mods have a tendency to break the game when updates drop. There's basically like no real mod support for Valheim at the moment. I feel like uh, if they didn't break anything, they'd be very good. Specifically like, I like the idea of plant everything. I also like the idea of the farming mod, where it's just better farming or the uh, the seed totem mod. Those are cool. Because right now farming is like, uh, farming is annoying. Farming just feels relatively incomplete and just inconvenient. Same thing with cooking. Wood. Put the Megan Gird back on. But yeah, I don't want my my game breaking. I also want to give like uh, good feedback to the devs, but also at the same time, it's like certain things are so simple that it takes two seconds to give the feedback and then it's like you might as well mod your game if the update's not coming out for a while.
I stay mod free though. These days, you never know when they're gonna drop a little hot fix or rebalancing or maybe an update similar to the root update. You, you don't know. You don't know these days. Get that harness gone. I see the skeeto over there. Okay, so in this uncultivated area, let's see if I could put a workbench or two. Perfect. Hmm. Might have to cultivate this a little bit and then put a workbench here. Just so that I can get despawning all around the farm like this. Should be alright. I mean, I should be able to uh, not plant near the workbench there because of the rocks. The rocks are just screaming at me, don't plant here. Factor for me was good reviews and videos for the first person perspective mod. I heard that was good. But uh, what I heard was especially good was uh, VR Valheim. I heard that was extra spicy. I have a feeling VR Valheim in the Mistlands would be <laughs> a time. An interesting time. See, all this is good. I should repair some things. Could harvest these as well. Not going to at the moment. Ah, uh, I might as well harvest the uh, turnips. Just have them around. Could also harvest the onion seeds. I know I want to feed some of them to the hens. Get some eggs. Turnips. Yeah, I'll use. I'll cook up some uh, stuffed mushroom. I'll just cook up a bunch of stuff until that uh, black metal chest is full. It. I mean, it's almost full, but yeah. So many turnips. I feel like the magically stuffed mushroom is just so nice because it doesn't take royal jelly. Royal jelly being that really valuable ingredient. Ooh, this is a free egg. Uh, who wants it? Dandelion for a hen. The hen will give me an egg. Plant some of these onion seeds. Whoops. No, I guess not.
Okay, magically stuffed mushroom. There's turnips. Mage cap. And... What is it? Uh, blood clots? Something like that. Something like that. Put these away. Cauldron check. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. Should have plenty of those. I think I gotta go try and find a nice little fulling camp after this. I need some linen. The amount of linen I have is not gonna cut it. Oh, I need more blood cloths. We have plenty of those. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. See, we have three ovens. So I want to stack divisible by 12. So you guess I'll make 24 of these, huh? Just eat this. I'll make... Mmm... Nah. Thought I was gonna make one more for the turnip, but no. Put this in there. I need wood for the ovens they're not on at the moment. Just grab, uh... Grab nine wood. So on the uh, the Valheim Discord today, somebody had uh, proven my theory correct that uh, Spine Snap Bow was actually better than Draugr Fang, even though Draugr Fang has that poison damage, and a lot of mobs don't take Spirit. The increased raw damage actually makes the Spine Snap Bow better. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, of course, yeah, it's like all obvious to me, but a lot of people, well, the one guy didn't understand why. And he, uh, well, I mean, he, he wasn't too keen on actually, like, listening to what I was telling him, but uh, the theory on why I had known this before it was actually tested is as follows. Bows at a high level, you have a rapid fire rate. Sure, you're using a decent amount of stamina, but it's good to have even more stamina. And once you've killed that target, which you will with frost arrows as they slow the target down and deal an ungodly amount of damage, you'll just regain that stamina right back, so it doesn't really matter. 
how much stamina. Unless it's taking like 400 stamina, which it's of course it's not. So that's fine. The increased stamina cost is fine. Uh, poison on the Draugrfin does not stack with itself. Poison type, poison damage type does not stack like spirit or fire does. Now, that's while that's very unfortunate, what it means is every time you are rapid fire hitting with the Draugr Fang, it is restarting the clock tick of the poison. And let's say you have a potential 100% of your poison damage on a shot, you are missing out on maybe 80% of the total damage if you have some decent decent quality uh bow skills if you have like bows 70 ish which uh a confident valheim player playing well sniping all the deer and everything would especially going through mid game with a root set uh you're going to be Losing out on a lot of the damage value from the Draugr Fang. But that's fine. That's fine. Because you're still getting an increased damage over, say, a Huntsman Bow. And you're still getting the initial poison damage yep. from each hit. Hey, yo, what's up? And so be because of that, because of uh, the fact that the poison doesn't stack... And you're losing out on, say, a ton of uh, potential poison damage per tick with the rapid fire. It is actually better to have non-poison damage on your bow. Specifically, more physical damage. And this is why Spine Snap Bow actually functions better in any decent capacity than the Draugr Fang. I mean, the Draugr Fang, for the Draugr Fang to function better than the Spine Snap Bow, your bow skill would have to be super low. And somebody who's like super tryhard is not going to have that bow skill super low. So yeah, get the Spine Snap Bow, make the Spine Snap so. Spine Snap Bow. Upgrade the Spine Snap Bow. That thing is going to be a beast. Yo, what's up, Adrian? Say that five times really fast. <laughs> no way. Spine Snap Bow. Spine <laughs> Snap Bow. Yeah. But yeah, it's so, going to be really good. I'm assuming I accidentally interrupted you on the explanation why the, st the Spine Snap Bow is better than the Draugr Fang. Yeah, somebody... I mean, I posted it in my Discord, but it's like somebody was... Uh, somebody was allergic to to reading while I was trying to explain why Spine Snap Bow was actually better than Draugr Fang. And then one of the helpers just went and tested the damage and was just like, yeah, actually, yeah, the Spine Snap Bow is better for, like, DPS. And it's like, yeah, of course it is. When you say DPS, do you mean when you rapid fire? or? Oh, just... yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because... I mean, it's like... Even with my uh, Mistlands deaths now, my bow skill was dropped to way lower than it usually is. So right now I have, I have bows 53. Okay. She tested it at bows 50, and it was still higher. With less stamina and less shots than I could use on just a day-to-day -day casual basis in Valheim. So... In reality, it is like leaps and bounds better, like hugely better to use Spine Snap than it is to use uh, Draugr Fang. Like, it is so much better to use Spine Snap. Like that will be a straight up upgrade. And I'm here, I'm ready for it. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. Now, what do you think is better, Arby's or Spine Snap though? Spine Snap. Okay. I mean, the Arby's has like a limited utility, but Spine Snap, you got Frost Arrows. You got Frost Arrows. I mean, what else is there to say? Well, I thought we were just focusing on DPS for now. 
Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Still. Is utility a uh, utility? 100% understand. No, yeah, but Frost Arrows 2, it's like... The Carapace Bolts are uh, 72 damage, if I recall correctly. Frost Arrows are... Uh, 78. And then it's like... That doesn't sound right. The, eff the effective DPS in-game is also increased because of the Frost slowdown, because you basically have more time to back up, to regain stamina, to to unleash in the target while they're in a, a, a distance or the mid-range. Uh, it's just really good. But the RB is actually really good at burst damage if you manage to find yourself underneath like a Gyal and it doesn't see you. Shoot that thing in the balls and watch that damage like activate your neurons just like so so nice yeah it's just a really really good damage opener plus if you're far away it's like why waste the frost arrows use the use the arby's arby's also gives you a tactical advantage on terrain because uh then the pushback on yourself and i've done this a couple times it allows you to push yourself uh down from a one crag to the next and it, not even like huge drops like even small drops can give you really good instant cover when you were fighting a gyal or what have you it's just really nice i'm gonna make some honey glazed chicken Let's see i think it's yoten puff okay so I'm, I'm just trying to understand the analysis so yeah burst damage right you max out so let's say it's max so let's go again so i'm not going to be assuming bows 50. i'm going to go let's go assuming bow zero crossbow zero mm -hmm. spine snap best uh spine snap and then best arrow which i believe right now what is it the carapace black? Carapace arrow. Carapace arrow just for raw damage. I mean, still, okay. like, even beyond, like, I think Carapace is also 72. So if you have a neutral target, the answer is still Frost. Frost arrow well, goaded. No, 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 no. We're, right now I'm just trying to focus on damage. No, yeah, like, damage, yeah. Because damage, so, the Frost arrow damage is 78 on so a neutral frost target. Frost arrow damage. 78 yep. and carapace arrow is is 72 so using the rb versus the spine snap again skills zero zero you know you're just starting out rb rb is still better but rb rb is is then better yeah but then once you get up to 50 when you can reload really fast now and like now we're talking now we're talking spine snap territory and then spine snap is better yeah uh especially because you can switch out to some like a better type of arrow such as frost arrow versus uh the best thing that you can make is oh yeah it, it, you're getting uh you're actually like getting that utility even on uh relatively frost resistant targets at those high higher bow levels because of the just the the, uh, the speed of the uh, of the fire, dude. You know what I saw earlier today? What's up? The staff of frost puts deep freeze on targets really fast, like in one hit or two hits. They're like frozen to their core, as if they were taking like four or five frostner hits. So the damage that is... That reminds me, I still gotta make the ropes. Oh yeah, we gotta make... See, that's why I wanted to raid a fulling camp. Because we don't have a lot, enough linen to make ropes for everybody. I want to raid the fulling camp. I need the linen. We need the flax. I just first want there to... Why don't we plant flax? Why don't we have a plains farm? I'm, I'm... We, <laughs> now, we do now. We have a small plains farm. Oh, you made... Okay, you made one. Yep. We have a small plains farm, we also have a little bit of a Grey Dwarf testing area farm thing. So upstairs now, uh, the upstairs blank, where the plains portal used to be, there's a small plains farm there. I have some barley planted because of the, uh, 
the Yggdrasil porridge, although we, we might not make that if it takes royal jelly. We might stick with the uh, magically stuffed mushroom, which I just made a bunch of. Okay. And then there is a portal upstairs called Grey, and that's in a troll cave right near a Grey Dwarf nest. So you can test out a whole bunch of stuff and also gain a bunch of skill levels. But yeah, uh, Staff of Frost, super cool. Really good in the mid range because it has a uh, a wild spray to it long range, like it just like shoots out, and you can't really control where it goes at the moment. So mid range excellent, long range no, close range, nah, maybe close range you'd much rather have the miss miss walker. Although if you're just like in co op and you're a pure thing mage, thing is though if 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 you're going mage. If you, you, know, go, you yeah, can't yeah, go yeah. Mistwalker, yeah. because you're not going to have the stamina. Right. If you're going pure mage, honestly, close range, if they're, if they're like right there, and you haven't frosted them somehow, just like switch to Staff of Protection and parry them. Well, parry you know, them. You also don't have to worry about that, because, okay, so this is my idea of yeah. mate build, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If something sneaks up on you, that's a little bit different. But you want to start out with either, like, wielding the Staff of Protection, or the Dead Razor. You want to mm -hmm. raise it twice, right? And get, the, and get those two skeletons, those distractions. Uh, and then Staff of Protection yourself, just so that you have the time, so that you can actually do something. Because you probably don't have a lot of health stuff, so that's going to be a worry. Um, next thing you do is you switch to one of the attacking uh, weapons. So either the Frost or the Fire. I think depending on how close they are, uh, I think the close range, fire is actually better. Because yep. you can't actually damage yourself. Yep. Yeah, close range fire, and then also long range fire. But mid range, Well, I think, I think long range fire is tough just because it's... You have to be very accurate. Yeah. If, you're, if you're good at the lob, yeah, go yeah. for it. If yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Though, I mean that'll be. We'll, we'll get good at that eventually. Also, I, I'm I trust our ability. The, I'm using up the refined fighter to make the mage stuff. Do it. Just, just to have a. Yeah. Do it up. Have it. You are the blood mage after all. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be wearing it just yet, just because uh, we don't have the hat. Oh, okay. Yeah. We don't have enough for that. We mm -hmm. need eleven more refined eider for that. So, oh, that's that shouldn't be too terrible. Hopefully, we find a uh, a skull or something. Blood mage better be the most OP role in multiplayer. True. Uh, True. Maybe. <laughs> I think also I just like frost and like uh, like a frost guy, or just also like a uh, like the mixed build like I was thinking the idea I was thinking of that I was talking about earlier was you can uh, you have a like a pure frost build where it's like you have spine snap and then you have uh, mist walker crom because you're using the mist walker you might as well yeah you have your parry shield and uh, you got of course you got your frost arrows and then your frost staff and that I'm is just, just so good. With having mixed food, you know, like if if you're gonna go Eider build, if you're gonna go magic build, you might as well go full magic build. I'm still hesitant on it being fifty fifty because if let's say you want to use the magic from the uh, from the frost, right, from the frost staff. Yeah. At that point, we just might as well use frost arrows. It does the same thing. You get that level. No, up. no, no, no. Frost staff is it gets frost. Like it gets frostier. It, it, it it's way frostier, and it, it is just so good to like well, frost I seen a bunch it, of like, targets. Full on in action. We've just been shooting great dwarfs and graylings. So I know, but it's like it's it's so nice. Like the deep freeze, being so quick like that is so good. Like deep freeze into Krom, deep freeze into Miss Walker, and what I was talking about, what you could do with a uh, just like I mean because it's it's because the utility is so cheap. On that you could just go uh, health stamina either and then you could do uh, freeze like frost staff 
uh, him and Awful, if they don't go too far, like it's like a seeker or something, and they don't go too far, then you just stagger lock them with the Himmin. Uh, if they're like a seeker and they just get sent flying, then you can just immediately follow up with the uh, Staff of Embers. And it's like, even if you're just doing two shots, that enemy is fucked. Like, they're already staggered, and then they're getting hit by two lobs of the the Staff of Embers. Like, okay. GG. Like, that's such a good little combo there. Also, Staff of Frost to, uh... Staff of Frost makes Krom, like, way, way, way better. Particularly, like, the Middle Mouse. Which has, like, no tracking. So much more consistent on, like, a deeply frozen target. I'm still a doubter, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. I, w I want to see that in action. Uh, I'd love to test it out, but right now we're not prepared for that. We're almost there. Just gotta I, get, also, I, just gotta I get also more feel like with, with the Eider stuff, especially because uh, I think having the heavy armor, it's good at to a certain extent, but having full heavy armor if you want to mix magic, is not good. And yeah. It's going to be interesting to see switching out like the pants or the... Yes! That's, I was then you get that, just then thinking you get that, that the other 40%, day. Then you get that 40%. Mm -hmm, and generation. that's still good. Yeah. 40% is amazing. Yep. So It might recover just as fast as stamina. So right. It's definitely something to consider. The I mean, the other thing about, going? like, Staff of Frost being uh, so cheap is that because it's the deep freeze it basically gives you like free time to uh, regain Eider and stamina so nice alright we gotta go uh, I didn't Always. Hey, I'm actually gonna try to make another portal to that other Mistlands island oh. to the south yeah so I actually have a, uh, I freed up the portal that uh, I first used that we're, we just don't use anymore. It's just called Mist. It's upstairs. Okay. Hello, whoever joined. Hey. Oh, hello. Is it still streamer hours, Leo? It oh, it is, yeah, it's streamer hours. Oh, I didn't see there's two extra of you. Oh, boy. Off on oh, in, fellas. Wait. Max, I yeah. got some news for you. Was I just unlocked Jacob and Esau. Oh boy, they suck. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they are they're tough to play with. They are they are tough, capable but tough. Yeah. But all in all, not fun. <laughs> I don't have fun with them. No, no, it was it was very hard. Uh, I almost beat uh, Blue Baby. Died just like before the last two hits. I was about to kill him. But luckily I killed Isaac, so I unlocked Jacob's Ladder. So, so good, that item. That's gonna be uh, And I beat it on Greed. So, uh, I'm gonna have... I think you unlock, like, not Twin Baby, because Twin Baby is from beating Mom. I think it's, like, Internal Baby or something like that. But it's something like that. Oh, Inner Child? Inner Child, yes, yes, yes. Inner Child's really good, too. It's pretty good. It's, uh, what it does is... If you die, you have an extra life, and you come back as, like, Pluto size, like, really, really small. Oh, that's so good. I, I love it. It's so funny. I always forget I have it, and then I suddenly come back to life as a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how it would work with Jacob and Issa. Would one of them be baby, or would both of them be baby? That's a great question. I feel like... Both of them would have to be because your life depends on both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a good question. Yes, I don't remember. I just got home from uh, from my trip over the weekend. Oh, how yeah. was the trip? It was fun. Oh my god. So I stayed at this Airbnb in Oneonta 
it's right next to Bell and Michael's, like this nice Italian restaurant. Um, I don't know if it was ever a hot spot for the students, though, but it was a really cute home. We were worried it was going to be old lady like because it looked like that in the pictures and like smell like mothballs and shit. But it didn't at all. It was very cozy. But when we got there, um, we, uh, we opened up our room. We realized we have a roommate named Uli. And then the owner of the house is also sleeping in the same home. So we're like, OK, well, we can work with it. And we open our door. And there's a, the, maybe the fattest cat I've ever laid eyes on <laughs> sleeping in our bed. It was tremendous. It was so cute and funny. Like the cat was easily, I want to say the size of a basketball. Wow. Big, big ass boy. cat. Big boy. And we were dying. We fucking love this cat. The sweetest thing ever. We na- There was no name tag or anything. So we named her Cream Puff for obvious reasons. And um, mm-hmm. then uh, Christine was exploring the house a little bit more. And she just, she hears a she stepped in like this meatball that was just in the middle of the hallway just a random lone meatball and so (laughs) we had a lot of questions for the airbnb lady so she sends her like this huge paragraph like hey we're getting settled in nicely just a few questions we wanted to know the cat's names they're very cute and uh we found this meatball thing in the hallway do you know what's up with that with somebody eating meatballs we had a lot of questions and um the owner answers in like the most old lady way possible with like full sentences, but just like two solid sentences. Just ignores most of our questions and goes, I am so sorry, but he gets nervous. So <laughs> it was throw up oh, in like the shape of a meatball. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so oh, we get no. two, of it, two bits of knowledge from that. One of the cat's names is Buddy, and he gets nervous sometimes. <laughs> and, then, and then another cat emer- we didn't even know there was another cat another cat emerges out from under the bed and just looks very anxious or like your buddy <laughs> and then in the morning we met her and it turns out the big fat chubby one's name was buddy and she was like buddy or christine was like buddy's such a shit name for a big fat cat like that it should be cream puff and i'm like i'm sure the name buddy came before the fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Owen, Owen, I told Owen that story, and Owen's like, that's fucking pal now. <laughs> it's pal now. It's oh, pal yeah. you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the weekend was cool. I just got home, and, like, all of Christine's gifts got here. I got her a bunch of really random cool shit. I got her, you know that meme where it's, like, the really rough drawing of, like, a girl sucking a guy's dick, and it goes, damn, okay, shoddy. <laughs> uh, I got, know. I don't know that one, but that sounds funny. It's good. If you look it up, you'll probably find it right away. But I have like the crying version with the girls crying right in front of his dick, and he goes, "Damn, are you okay, Shoddy?" <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, damn, Shoddy, you okay? That's what it says. <laughs> I've, have, I've have that. I have um, it's like a 3D printed gold cross, but it has Shrek crucified on the front of it. <laughs> And it goes over like a, it goes over a necklace, and I have some other jewelry that I got her, and a little fart whistle. It's like a little whistle that you blow and it makes a fart noise. That's nice. Top tier shit in the works. I'm excited. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's Valheim going, Leo? Oh, it's good. Good shit. What are you working on? Oh, just uh, testing a little something, something. You know. Yeah. Feeling some shit out. I'm looking for a place for another uh, Mistlands base on a new island. Fire. Nice. Do a Cooper run. You got me in Isaac mode now. It's nice. been a solid. It's been a solid four days since I played this game. Wow, really that's oh that's God, impressive yeah, for you. What are you doing? I am bone dry right now. <laughs> I need some Isaac wet in me. Mm. Wet in mm. me. Wet in me. <laughs>
so you're at a point now in Isaac where you just have to unlock the stuff for all the tarnished characters, right? Or do you still have other tarnished. stuff to unlock? Tarnished. I have other stuff to unlock among the um, non-tainted crew. Tainted. Tarnished, tarnished among or Elden Ring among us? <laughs> <laughs> I mean among. Uh, I mean, I mean among. Confirmed. <laughs> we build so.